Hey there, how you doing? Charlie Winters here with an update bet for Tuesday the 30th of May. Well, already we have one non-runner. It, it's not the end of the world, but a potentially another non-runner, and then it like, scuppers a decent day. So what I've done, I'm, I'm off this week, so I've had a real good look at the evening cards at Nottingham and Lingfield. Well, there is a, a draw bias. It's not huge, um, but what, what I have done, I've followed the draw bias, and... Um, these, these are the reasons behind the selection. So I've gone for draw bias, but I've also looked into whether they really want or there could be some improvement on quicker ground. And I do think there is an angle where we could potentially get a bigger prize horses placed. Unfortunately, yesterday, the bet didn't work out. I think for a long way, some of the big prize runners ran well in the, uh, the, doubles, and the, uh, the doubles bet. Unfortunately, they all came out of the places. So obviously, no return from that bet. But I definitely think... It's worth keeping a go at at such big prices. So I've gone for 40 pence each way doubles and 10 pence each way trebles. That comes to 10 pounds. But I have also found an extremely well handy. I mean, I must have missed this yesterday. It's absolutely crazy how well handicapped this horse is. And it's actually well drawn at Nottingham as well. But I'll get into that. I believe it's the last horse in the video. Only by the way that Skybet's um, pinned these horses down. I don't know why I said pin these horses down. <laughs> let, let, this is it's just how Skybet have laid these horses on the screen. So as I said, 40 pence each way doubles, 10 pence each way trebles, and I've gone for a single each way bet on the nap. So let me get into it. So the first selections are in the 725 at Nottingham, paying four places instead of three. The market's slightly moved since, because obviously at Skybet, they update the markets at nine o'clock. Um, but there is a preference, it's not huge, but it's um, interesting preference for horses that are drawn low over this distance in the 725 at Nottingham. So what I've gone for, I've gone for Fernico at 25 to 1, Shot of Love at 14 to 1, and King of the Jungle at 18 to 1. The first two in the betting are extra, sorry, the first two that I've read out are very interesting because they're both trained by uh, Mick Appleby, and the, the, the stable is going pretty well. They've also got first-time headgear, both of them. So I do believe between them, they will dictate the pace. Well, at Nottingham, it does favour um, front-running horses. Obviously, if you go off too quick, you're going to get swallowed up. But if these two horses, I think the best form is shot of love. But Fernico has got unbelievable pace, as it showed. I believe it was at Southall a couple of times. So those two horses, they're definitely interesting angles there. And as I said, Mick, Mick Appleby's stable is going pretty well at the moment. The third selection in that race is King of the Jungle. Well, that's by Mick Easterby. And that horse, it would appreciate this slightly quicker ground, but it's actually bred to be an out-and-out -out sprinter. Well, it made its debut over seven furlongs, and it's been over seven furlongs since. So this drop back to six could be interesting because it's bred to this distance. It doesn't mean it'll want it, but it should, it should want it based on um, pedigree. So uh, those are the three selections, far too big a price to ignore, especially with all the fancy horses being drawn out wide. The second race is the 8.25 at Nottingham, and this is also, um, I believe this is also for low drawn horses as well yeah it is sorry low drawn horses as well just thinking then sorry so 825 at nottingham paying four places instead of three the first selection is silver screen and the second selection is ard bracken silver screen at 11 to 1 ard bracken at 20s both represent decent chances on the low end of the draw and finally what is now the nap especially the nap of the evening racing is the greatest showman at 15 to 2 in the 8.45 at Lingfield, paying four places instead of three. Right, I'm just flick to this race and I shall show you. So, as you can see, I don't need the, um, the flat stats for this race. But first company, decent draw in one. However, it prefers soft ground. Um, it's bred to want soft ground as well, and it certainly isn't that. However, I am not saying it cannot win, and it probably will win. It's got the best of the draw and in running into decent form. However, its preference for soft ground could leave it vulnerable because it's won on fast ground before in a three-runner race. 
But something I note very interesting, I think it was rated 95 at the time, but it only ran up to um, a racing post rating of 70. So it underperformed massively. However, it was 1-3 to three and fully expected to win that day, and it did. Um, I do think a lot of the other horses are other all-weather horses. And um, I believe the, the well, the handicapped accordingly. However, the greatest showman, yes, don't get me wrong, it has been running on the all weather, but I don't think it wants the all weather because I actually tipped it one time and it ran okay, but it couldn't handle the tight bend. And uh, there is a bend at, at Nottingham, sorry, no, there isn't a bend in this race or at Nottingham, <clears throat> but um, it came absolutely flying that day, the greatest showman. I think it was at Lingfield, but it, it virtually ran into the car park. Um, it was ridiculous. So I think it will want this straight course. Um, Low, low draws, uh, low numbers fancied. It's nine to one, and it used to run regularly. Quite, I think it was only last year. Regularly, off in the seventies and running decent races. I believe it's off. Well, you can see where it's off now. Fifty-five, and then you have got Ryan Kavanagh taking a further seven off. Well, he's ridden it twice recently and rode okay races on it. So I'm not too worried about that. So I, I think it's got every. So realistically, it's off a mark of forty-eight if you do it for seven, seven pound. This horse is better than 48. I can remember running at York last year. It was inconvenienced by the draw, but it ran okay, or it moved into contention before fading because of the draw. This has definitely got a chance tonight. So I've gone for a single on it as well. And it, and the single I've had is basically, it's the remainder of what we're in the can. I'm not recommending you have the remainder of your can if you've got a decent chunk in there, but I do believe it. I think it was like £1.43 each way. So this is the evening bet. So, as I said, yeah, it's 40 pence each way doubles and 10 pence each way trebles. That, that comes to a straight tenner anyway. Then I've gone for the pound, pound forty-three each way on The Greatest Showman. So, if you can give me a like or a subscribe, that would be absolutely fantastic. Apologies for the late video. I wasn't going to do one, but with <clears throat> with a non-runner, um, I just felt as though the bet could fall apart a bit. So, I'll be looking for horses for tomorrow's racing. I'm already looking at Carlisle in the evening, but I'll be looking for a daytime bet as well. Focusing on the draw biases, focusing on whether they can handle soft, uh, sorry, whether they can handle fast ground. So the very best of luck, Charlie Winters, over and out. Cheers, mate.